And this is a letter from the Rambam, which the Rambam wrote to his Talmud Rabbi Yosef of Baghdad. Rabbi Yosef of Baghdad was a, a thief and a shomer. He wasn't just a scholar. He was a deep person. And he was like a kindred spirit. Him and the Rambam spoke the same language. He was very affected by the Rambam. And he saw in the Rambam his Rebbe, his leader, his teacher, his counselor, his guide, and so forth. And the Rambam loved him. The Rambam writes someplace in this letter, he says, there's nothing in the world that gives me more joy than getting letters from you. The Rambam is very strongly connected to this Rabbi Yosef of Baghdad. Evidently, this Rabbi Yosef of Baghdad was a little bit young and combustible. <laughs> Spontaneously reactive, or reactionary. And when people spoke ill of the Rambam, he, he couldn't swallow it. And he made trouble. This is a letter which the Rambam writes to him I, I think I saw in the introduction, I, I didn't read this letter today, I learned this letter five, six years ago, today I just prepared it. I think it says in the introduction, this is not one letter, it's a compilation of different things that he wrote him over the years, where the Rambam is supposed to be giving counsel, giving guidance to his Talmud, Rabbi Yosef, and the gist and the spirit of the letter is that he should calm down and relax, and not be so nervous and agitated, and uh, it's in everybody's best interest, including in the Rambam's best interest, for him not to get so angry and so upset and so cooked up about the way people are treating even the Rambam himself and let alone Rabbi Yisrael of Baghdad. He writes to him, you know, you can't expect... Rabbi Yisrael writes to the Rambam, these people hate me so much. So the Rambam says, why shouldn't they hate you? You condemn them in public. Of course they hate you. Now you're right and they're wrong. But the fact that you're right and they're wrong doesn't mean that a person doesn't hold a grudge. He says, there are people who don't hold grudges. And he mentions them by name. On page, um, on page 7. See, the good news is every single column is numbered. On page 7, at the end of Sif Tesvav, it says, You can't expect everybody to be like Hanina Ben Deysa and Pinchas Ben Yoyed. People hold grudges. You, you, as they say in our country, you diss somebody, they diss you back. So the Ramadan says, relax, don't get all cooked up. You start it up, now you have to live with the consequences, but don't make it more of a federal case than that. This letter is so... If you took this letter, translated word for word, I don't know how many publications are coming out in Crown Heights now, and print them, everybody will say, you see, he has to fix himself. <laughs> but the, the, it's a letter from the Ramam which is so apropos because it describes the, the method to the madness of Machlaikis, or the madness to the method of Machlaikis. And, you can't expect to fix it. It's ungestunken, it stinks, it can't be fixed. Just back off, that's all he says. Don't fix it, you can't fix it. You'll only make it worse. Just back away, back away. It's what he writes. It's very, it's, it's to the Zach, it's Rambam. Well, we're gonna go in order, okay? There's a letter where the Rambam wrote to his Talmud Rabbi Yosef, and it seems to me, I'm almost sure actually, that this, this Rabbi Yosef was the Talmud for whom the Maiden of Nebuchadnezzar was written. For those who do not know, Moira HaNevuchim was a letter written to a Talmud, Shenit Palsef, that got caught up in the philosophy and he got entangled. And there's an introduction to the Meir HaNevuchim which is written to Talmidi Mar Yosef. And it's the same Rabbi Yosef from Baghdad to whom the Rambam sent the Meir HaNevuchim as an answer to his questions. What you may not know about the Meir HaNevuchim was that the Rambam didn't write it at once. The Rambam wrote it slowly and sent it to him piecemeal. He sent it to him a shtikalach. Rambam writes, I sent you six sections and I'm going to send you some more. Rambam's Meir Nebuchim was written in pieces. If you've ever started Meir Nebuchim, you could see that it's not written in what seems like a very logical order. I mean, if you know anything about Rambam, Rambam is Mr. Seder. He's Seder, Mesud, and everything. The Yadach, the Meir the Yadach is extremely organized. The Meir Nebuchim is written in an odd kind of an order. The Rambam writes himself that part of the reason he wrote the Meir Nebuchim in what looks like disorder is because he doesn't want not intelligent people to understand. As I said, I I deliberately wrote it in what seems like not perfect order, so it should be only available to scholars. And the emphasis is plenty of Seyda and the Meir also. But in any case, he sent, it was written in pieces, he sent them to his Talmud Rabbi Yasef. And um, in addition to the Meir and Evuchim, this Talmud Rabbi Yasef got other writings from the Rambam and so forth. 
And he, so to speak, represented the Rambam in Baghdad, in Baghdad, which was in Iraq. It was a very prominent city. It was an Irve Embi Yisrael. There were many Jews. It was a very long, established Jewish community. And the Rambam felt authorized to govern, to intercede, to give counsel to the community of Baghdad. And it created a problem. People got upset. And the Yisrael got upset that the people got upset. And we had Baruch Hashem everyone's fighting God's battles and then Ambam is telling his Talmud how he feels he should deal with it so let's begin from the beginning we're going to read in order okay and we'll read whatever we read what we don't read you're going to take home and read because tomorrow I'm not doing this what I want you to know my son in the truth of my moon and my page one column one after zero comes one. After twelve comes five, but after zero comes one. It's numbered by columns. One, two, three, four, because I cut and pasted. This is two whole, I, I cut and pasted. I, I, this is, if I had printed the original, it would be a book, because it comes with the Arabic. I cut out the Arabic and just printed the Hebrew. They accused the Rambam of having immune deficiencies. Because, <laughs> this is one of those things, which you read it and you can't believe it. The Rambam has an Egeras Tchias Mason. A treatise on resurrection. And the whole treatise of the Ramam resurrection is the Ramam defending himself. The Ramam was accused of not believing in the resurrection of the dead. Why not? Because he doesn't talk about it for enough pages. He talks about it, but not long enough. And the fact that he talks about it only for a few lines, not for a few pages, is proof that he didn't really believe it. This is what people said about the Ramam, which is absolutely ridiculous. I push it stupid on the face of it. But people were looking, as the Rebbe says, they were looking for trouble. So they picked on this. Because the Rambam spends like four or five pages explaining Olam Haba, Olam Haba, the world to come. He spends a half a page explaining Tchiyas HaMesim. So some, someone decided the Rambam doesn't really believe in Tchiyas HaMesim. Because if he believed in Tchiyas HaMesim, he would speak about Tchiyas HaMesim and he's much talking about Olam Haba. So the Rambam wrote a letter to defend himself. He says, normally I wouldn't even respond, Bechlau. Complain all you want. But since it's Teireh, I'm a choyev to respond. So he says, I spoke about Elam Haba for five pages because I had five pages worth of material. I spoke about Chiyas Amazing for a half a page because I had only half a page worth of material. And I don't like to repeat myself. <coughs> but if someone is going to accuse me of not believing in Chiyas Amazing because I didn't talk about it long enough, here goes Chiyas Amazing, Chiyas Amazing, Chiyas Amazing, Chiyas Amazing. You think I believe now? This is more or less with the I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek. But the Ramah makes a joke. I, I, if I don't devote equal time, was it a political election? I didn't devote, I said what I had to say in as concise a way as I could. I'm not a person who wastes words. It's against my nature, it's against the nature of Chokhmah. I said what I had to say. So, what's the accusation? That I didn't, Sas Yeser, just lay it on thick. I spoke about El Mahaba for five pages, not because I was trying to lay it on thick, because I had five pages worth of material. Is the guest Chesam Here's another case where the Ramam is defending himself against these old ideas. Ram didn't believe in this, and that, and the other thing. So the Ramam says to his Talmud Rabbi Yisrael, "Let me tell you what I believe." In other words, they're not going to believe anyway because they're looking for trouble. But I want you to know what I believe. He says like this: "What I want you to know, and the truth of my faith in the tale of Meishar Abenu, she'enli suffik b'me'uma." I have no doubt in any of it. All of the things you mentioned in my letter, that so and so and so and so and so and so are reading into my texts, that I don't believe in this, and here my amun is weak, it's all nonsense. I believe in every word of Teras Mesha. I trust that exactly what's written in the Chumash happened the way it's written. I have no doubt in my amun in the Mabish. Says the Rambam Ella. But, she'ein midoisai ki midesecha b'ni. My midis are different than your midis, my son. Ki ani moicha kvaydei miyoid. I forgive, I forgo my honor a lot. Va'ata, and you, ein chayocha lehesapak. You can't contain yourself. When people criticize that Amam, he doesn't believe, Rabbi Yisaf, a bag that blew up like Mount what? Rebbe Helen, he blew up. I lost his mind. So the Amam says, don't worry. I'm a from Jew, I believe everything you have to believe, don't worry. But you don't have to get so upset. He says, the difference between you and I is my ability to control my Amidus. Now listen to the Ramam's language, listen to these words. Ani, 
I was reared by Hagil, by my advanced years, Vahanesayin, my experiences in life, Naisif Lamasha Machayev in addition to the fact that when you think intellectually, you recognize how useless it is to blow up. So the Ramam says to his Tamar Rabbi Yasef, Rabbi Yasef, I'm older than you, <laughs> and I have more experience than you, and evidently I've thought more about me, Disroys. And for these three reasons where you blew up, I forgive him. Let him condemn me all they want. But it's a very different Rambam. I was raised by years, by experience, and by intellectual analysis. And in that order, could you say it more concisely? Beautiful. Gorgeous. I was reared by years, and by experience, and by study. That you should know. Shanile Chibati Sefer I did not compile this work. I'm almost sure that this is the Made in Nebuchadnezzar, but I'm not 100% sure because the footnotes are cut off. I didn't do it because I wanted to achieve notoriety amongst the Jewish people. Veloi Kadeshi it Pasim Shmi, nor did I write this book to disseminate my name. Sha'azi Aitzeli, because in that case it would really bother me. Imlay Tiskayim Matarasi Ashar Begola Chibatif. If in fact I wrote this Sefer for fame and for notoriety and for influence and I would see that I'm not getting the notoriety that I wish and I'm not having the influence that I'd like, I'd get angry. He says, but that's not why I wrote this Sefer. I didn't write it to appeal to anybody or to anything. This is Rambam. Listen carefully to the Rambam's words. He says, Elo Chibatev, I compiled the Tchila first of all. But the Shem Yedeh, God's my witness. And the first reason I wrote the Sefer is La'atzmi. I wrote it for myself. I wanted to clear up the issues of my own mind, so I wrote the Meir Nebuchadnezzar. I should free myself once and for all from theoretical analysis and from intellectual search. To what I'm going to need intellectually to understanding the truth and having a clear sense of what the truth is and what the falsehood is and so forth. So I should have it for my old age. For the sake of the Abishis. I wrote the Meir Nebuchim for three reasons. I wrote the Meir Nebuchim first of all, to clear up the issues of my own mind. Second of all, that I should have it when I'm old and I can't reason as well. And for the Abishis. That's my third reason. I wrote it for the Abishis. And he explains. Because the truth be told, in truth, I am a zealot, says the Rambam. I am a, I'm a, I don't know how to say Kane in English. I have zealously zealed, I don't know if there's such a word, to the Amish, to the God of Israel. I see a people without a book on truth. Without that precise, correct and precise philosophy, theology. I therefore did what I did for the Amish did alone. That's rule number one. First of all, I did it to help myself. Second, I did it for Klal Yisrael, but I did it for an Amish. I didn't do it to get a Yasha Kayach and to get a Vestach a good, what do they call it, an advance. I did it for the Amish. Number two says that I want you to know something else. I'm no fool. I know Elam Hazer. I know people. And I knew and I knew clearly. When I wrote this Sefer, that it's going to reach without a doubt, the people with bad hearts, bad midas, that are jealous. And I numbered, you see, I numbered with Roman numerals, one through five, I think, one through four. Number one, he's going to belittle, he's going to make fun of what's so special about the Sefer. He's going to say nobody needs it. It's extraneous. Extraneous, whatever the word is. The book is incomplete. This book is even going to reach such fools. He's going to have no idea whatsoever of how valuable a work this is. He's going to say it has little value altogether. I knew that my book would reach beginners. Top of page two, top of column two. Ha who's living in his imagination. Ha is all confused. If, if you don't mind, could you move over? Rebbe Tzinolta. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you for coming. I absolutely am. The whole shit is now in a higher madrigue. I came to enjoy myself. Well, please come often. It's our honor and our pleasure to have you and our privilege to have you. Especially Mrs. Minkowitz. The Yichul Eibay Kama McCabe is going to have all kinds of questions. You know why he's going to have questions? Because he's clueless. Kivan Sheini is a they say him. He doesn't know the principles of, of reason. Either he's not going to know the rules of reason or he's simply not going to be able to be fine enough in his discernment of what is a question and what needs analysis and so forth. And as a result, he's going to challenge my safer portion in his ignorance. I also knew continues Rambam and he says, Lidei ha mischasid lefidim yeinei. And a very sharp words. And this is a translation from the Arabic. Yeah. To a person who's liberal. That's how he translates mischasid in context. In his own imagination. Hamauvim, which is like stone. Hamitumtum, that's very <laughs> underdeveloped. Sheyalez al mashanichlo bey. He's going to speak Lashon Hara about what I included in my Sefer and accuse it of being me, Sejus Adeis. Mashanich by Sejus Adeis. And he's going to discredit what I wrote in my Sefer that's actually the principles of Amun. And the Rambam writes, Ve'elu heimarev. And that's most people. I wrote a Sefer. And I'm not a fool, the Rambam says. I know everyone's going to read it. And most people are not going to be happy about it. Some because of jealousy. Some because of ignorance. Some because of a deficiency push in intellectual development. And I'm expecting the, I'm expecting the attack. And I wrote it anyway. Why? Because it had to be written. Now, the Yahweh believe Gam says Rambam, however, it will come without a doubt. Also, it's column two, six lines from the top. To the rare individuals who Hashem calls that are taker by the yoshir v'atzedek v'teve atun, who are people of, of fairness and directness and justice, and who understand well. Ve'elu yedu erech mashasinu, and those rare individuals will know the worth of what we did. And then the Rambam says, "Asher ato harishin shebahim, you are the first." He says to his Talmud, "Yes, we're back. That you are my favorite. You're my first Talmud." Va'af im la'yeli b'dedi zulos cha. If I had nobody else to talk to in this generation besides from you, Daya, that's enough for me. Rambam. Koshkein says Rambam, certainly more so. I received letters from the wise people of France and others. When Rambam talks about France, he doesn't mean France. He means the southern France, the Provence, which is at the bottom of that, where France and Spain meet by the Pyrenees Mountains. It was called the Provence. There was a lot of it was the place in the world where philosophy and Kabbalah emerged. It was a very unusual community that I had lived there. Huh? Chachmi Lunil, they're called. Um, and they had the Kabbalah influence from the Hasidi Ashkenaz and the philosophy influence from Rambam, and they were the Rambam's biggest Talmidim, the Chachmi Lunil. They lived uh, an ocean away and uh, several thousand miles away, but they corresponded with the Rambam a lot. So I received Mikhtavei Chachmei Tzarfas letters from the wise men of France with the Lassam and others Bishmei Sehem with their names Mispolemi Mashenase reacting favorably to what I did already Umevakshim Hashlamase and asking me to complete it or Kvar Nispashet Lekatsi Ayishov my work has reached the edges of civilization and again understand that the Maiden of Uchem was not written as a single volume the Ramam didn't have time and was very, very busy, as you'll see later. So he wrote a shtiklach vise. He wrote pieces. And as he wrote a section, he sent it. And it was disseminated. He, the book wasn't even finished and it was being learned all over the world. They're asking me, no? More? More? Noch? Noch? Vechoma shatiyarti locho. And everything I described continues, Ramam. This is Mamish prophetic. Al mishalei kablu koroi loi. Says Ramam, the fact that I'm telling you that there can be all kinds of people who are going to condemn this Sefer either because they say it's not significant enough or because it's against Yiddishkeit or whatever the nonsense they're going to come up and criticize my Sefer 
says the Rambam, I know as a matter of fact, it's during my lifetime. It's now. There's going to come a time, says Rambam. When the jealousy will pass, you could rewrite the same letter and substitute the Meir for the Tanya for the Lakota Sirius. And the desire to, desire to be a leader, power. The whole Jewish world is going to sustain itself from his alone. And I want you to know, I want you to know this, as a matter of fact. But from the little bit that I have learned, any good idea in Ashkafa that exists, whether you're reading it in Aran, or a Ramban, or a Rabbeinu Yene, or an Achren, says Alt Rambam. Every really profound Hashkaf idea is made in Nebuchadnezzar. I'm telling you. The Rambam was an extremely creative person. And his Lashn is Mo'od Tam Tzitzit. He's very Bekitzit. The Rambam is packed with ideas. Everybody quotes Rambam. Some people don't even tell you quote Rambam. Hashkaf. <laughs> I was thinking before that Rabbi Salavechik, Rabbi Zadeva Levi, Rabbi Zadeva the Rav from his university said that since Chorben Beis Hamikdash there were two philosophers, the Rambam and the Alter Rebbe. That's what he said. He says the Rambam Alter Rebbe was not afraid. He was a misnagid of Al Chassid and Gizag Gevaren. He said the Alter Rebbe was not afraid to quote the Rambam because since the Rambam there had not been a philosopher, philosopher like him, the Rabbi Salavechik said since Chorben Beis there were two philosophers, the Rambam and the Alter Rebbe. Is an, everybody is going to lean on me. So the Rambam says, now they're condemning me. But they, and you know what? He was 100% correct. 100% correct. That's exactly right. But he's still the Rambam. The Rebbe always says, He gave clarity not just to the Yidden of his generation, but all future generations. I want to read those words again. Forgive me, but this is an indulgence. But in future generations. When the jealousy will pass. And the desire to be the leader will dissipate. The whole of Kali is going to sustain itself in this book alone. And they're going to forget all of the Svarim. Without a doubt. There's no doubt in my mind there's going to come a day when people are going to be nourishing, eating out of my trough, out of my Rambam, out of my Meir Nebuchim, and all of the Svarim are going to be forgotten. Prat. With the exception. Of a person who chooses to make this a lifelong career to keep on studying. Even if his study is not to achieve a certain end in knowledge. In other words, he's studying for the sake of knowledge. A researcher, say he'll read other Svarim as well. But if a person is reading Svarim to know the truth, they will read my Seifer and that's it. Nothing else. V'nizer klal Nasef. This is another basic argument to the effect Hamachiach, which shows that nothing has happened which I did not anticipate. Ramam says, you're shocked by their reaction? I'm not shocked, I expected it. <laughs> you're upset that they condemned me? I was waiting for it. But first of all, no, there are people who understand. And he says to his Talmud, he says, and if you're the only one, that's also plenty. And, but the day will come, the Ramam writes, the time will come. Klaus Shlishi. Rule number three. <laughs> This work is not like the Teda. God forbid. What is the Teda? She has kol The Teda was fit for everybody. Everybody has to study the Teda. The Meda Nevuchim is in fact not for everybody. It's not even like the words of the Nevi'im and the Ksuvim which have a broader appeal. Nevertheless, Miktas Hochu Akharov. Some have followed it. The Tater. U Miktas Rachakumiolov and some have distanced themselves from it. In other words, even the Tater, the Chumish, which was written back of everybody. There are people who doubt it and question it, and some who follow it. Right? 
and Kol Shkei Mechal Lachemir, my Sefer, which I never wrote in the outset for everybody. I'm on top of column three now, okay? Ve'in sichlos oisam, shal ayadu ere chibur ze'eh, says Rambam. The foolishness of those people who don't appreciate this work is not gedela greater, me sichlos, from the foolishness, kol ma, all of those, shal ayadu min hanyonem mu'alakim, they have no concept of the Rebishter, Vakoshke and Masha's a lot of but certainly don't know other concepts. Whatever other concepts means, it means other spiritual ideas. So the Imam says, I, I expected this. And there are people who deny the Chumash itself. And the Chumash was written for everybody. So if someone's not happy with the men in the book, I'm going to get upset. It's, part of, it's the way it works. You do what you got to do, you know. You can write a Sefer in two ways. You can write a Sefer to have a broad appeal. And you can write a Sefer to have a true message. If you want it to have a short-term value, make it have a broad appeal. If you want it to be there for posterity, suffer the indignations of now, and, and then it'll be revered for, for, forever. If a person chooses to get angry and upset, from anybody who's intellectually deficient about certain ideas, or he's akish or he's stubbornly opposed to a true idea, or he's it, or he deliberately, wantonly goes against to follow a certain inclination which is false. So the Ramah says, you're going to get upset at every person who doesn't like what's written either because he's foolish, or because he's stubborn, or because he's disrespectful. So you're going to eat your heart out, you're going to burn your engine. Your whole life is going to be pain and anger. It's just not good life to constantly be frustrated and upset and angry that not everybody agrees. I mean, this could read like a It's the past punkt yet. So people are upset. It's part of life. The Ramam says, this is the truth. Now it has a narrow appeal. It'll be here forever. Cloud of E. Ramam continues, number four. Now this is the most beautiful part of it all. I want to tell you about myself. I want to talk about me, my own nature, my own personality. This is the Rambam. Although you know me, you know me so well, you know every one of my character traits, my strengths and weaknesses. Still, I want to tell you about me so you should understand how I am reacting. Rabbi Yosef was disappointed by the Rambam's lack of reaction. The people in Baghdad mocked the Rambam. They made a joke out of him. And Rabbi Yosef got very upset. And then the Rambam said, no. So Rabbi Yosef got upset about the Rambam's lack of reaction. So the Rambam says, let me tell you about Mr. Gleifenstein, why I didn't, I wasn't as excited as you got. He says, I want you to know. I don't need troublemakers in Baghdad. I got local troublemakers here in, in where I live, in, in, in Mitzrayim, in Cairo. Be'ir in my city, and noshim she'enim for some be'ir, people who are not very well known. Ve'ein lahem lo'y ma'ilam lo'y achelis. They're not extraordinary in any way, nor are they especially capable in any capacity. Yesh bahem min agai ve'akina. And they're arrogant and jealous. What's their ma'ilam? They're chutzpaniks, that's all. Ad kedekach. It goes to such a degree, shale'inu b'chibar agad lazeh. They never study this work. They never even saw it. But you know why? Nobody should say about them. That so and so needs somebody else's help. If they read this Sefer, they're conceding that they need me. God forbid, I'm Chachisazog. They refuse to read my Sefer because they don't want anybody to suspect that they are in need. Of my counsel, said Amam writes, and this I don't have to go to Baghdad for. I have it local. I have it right here where I live. And their whole position is that this sefer is beneath them intellectually. They're superior to it. They're concerned. What are people going to say if they're caught reading the sefer? And the reality is that they remain as time passes. As the blind stumbles around in the darkness. So the Ramam says, you're complaining about Baghdad people. I have people by me, it's all bizarre. And it don't bother me at all. 
So why are you reacting as, as, as profoundly as you are, as excitedly as you are, to the behavior of so-and-so who's behaving in a similar fashion? And as I mentioned to you, there are two personalities in this letter that the Ramam is referring to. The first he calls Rosh HaYeshiva. He doesn't say his name. Apparently it was an elder that he did. He was a Jew probably older than the Ramam in the 60s or 70s. He was an old man. And he was, I mean, you're talking about the Tukuf of Shalim. He was Mestam, a very big goan. But he was no Rambam, you understand. Because nobody was a Rambam. There was only one Rambam. And he was jealous of the Rambam. He, he was condemning. He was very critical of the Rambam. Because he really didn't give him a full hearing. I mean, you know, as great as a person is, when you see greatness that exceeds your own, you don't know how to deal with it. I mean, you want a proof? Just bring Yosef and his brothers. Yosef's brothers were bigger tzaddikim. And yet they saw Yosef, they couldn't fathom a human being should behave like Yosef behaved and be a tzaddik. So they condemn him. So this God, this Rosh Yeshiva, evidently looked at the Rambam and couldn't imagine that a person who was, in quotes, so open-minded, end quote, with the philosophy of Talan de could be the Rambam. So he condemned him. And the truth of the matter is, when you condemn a person, usually you didn't listen to them. Because if this person had truly paid attention to the Rambam, he would realize that there's nothing to condemn, just to celebrate. But he knee-jerked, he reacted. He reacted spontaneously, because there was a jealousy fact. And the Rambam says, so what's the big deal? It's human nature. There's nothing new about this. Most people are jealous. Most people cannot tolerate somebody else's success. As they say in Yiddish, mefagintnisht, <laughs> back off. Then I'm saying, you're not going to fix the whole world. I've already learned a long time ago that it's not my duty to fix the whole world. I forgive him with my whole heart. You should forgive him too. This is what the Ramam is writing. He says like this, Why are you so surprised? That this gone, this sage in Egypt, in, in Baghdad is behaving the same way. And he listened to these descriptions. I say a man. He was raised with a, with, a, with, a, with a neglect that has nothing like it in the whole generation. Apparently the Ramam was not, didn't have a high opinion of the Chinuch in Baghdad. And number two. He's an old man. Sometimes you get old. Zindik and Kemenisht. But the guy of a you get older, the only thing that stays is the arrogance. And his status, his position... He comes from a good stock. His father and his grandfather were pious rabbis. And he lacks a skill at in discernment. And I think the way you read it is that Amman was one of those people who actually believed that the place you lived affects your clarity. He says the, the aklim, the latitude where he lives is not subject to a certain kind of intellectual lucidity, klarkeit. Is it at that he's confused? And he continues. And he needs for people. He needs others. to instill in them that abominable consumable food that all the people are waiting anxiously everything that the Rosh is going to say Oy, it sounds so familiar what can I tell you or for the honor of God he's, he's so dependent on people saying that they need his knowledge and to give him honor this is how he identifies himself and these foolishnesses, these narashkaitans, have become their nature. That it's all about honor and formality. It's not about reason. It's not about thought. It's not about analysis. It's about. You're very gentle. I'm gentle. That's my job. <laughs> You're translating it so gentle. Okay. And the drama, I think, is happy about that. That's my humble opinion. Says Ramam, why do you think, my son, that those people should reach a step of recognizing emes? To the degree that he should admit that he had the lack. And it will uproot his honor 
and the honor of his parents. Most people don't do that. You're expecting too much of this person. And the Ramam's point is, forgive him. Forgive him. Laws, laws, laws. Don't worry about my honor. Forgive Zayn Michael. Is there something wrong? Guess what? It's human nature. It's been that way since Adam and Chava. Even a person, top of column four now, who had more wholeness than he, wouldn't have the capacity to say, you know what, I'm wrong and you're right. And I know with certainty, says Rambam, the more people talk about me, the more people talk about me, the more crazy they get. Maybe it brings more pressure to create causes. Him and those who are following after him. Anybody else who wants to have an independent honor and status. To minimize, to belittle my works. And to demonstrate to people that they are more perfect and more whole. From the need to look into my work. They may disagree with what I'm saying. And they also say more. If only I would want. To write a safer, I would write a better book than Rambam. In a shorter amount of time. <laughs> okay. And if the circumstance is going to bring them to challenge what I believe and what I've done, knowing that I'm right, they'll do that also. This is human nature. When the ego gets involved, what do you want? Isn't this brilliant? Huh? Is that the secret of English? Drook him up. That's all, that's all. Machima said, all them in the islands, but give it up, hey man. The other, the men's gate of it. This is amazing. No clause to the Zach. It's so clear. The Chose bin Chai bin Hashem bin Chai Hashem bin And all of this, I swear, says that I'm my son. A name, it's tired, AC, it causes me no pain. Va filarisiv, va nasa bin Echechosi. And I've even seen this. And it's been done to me in my presence, he says. I wouldn't react. I would speak with respect and dignity. And keep quiet. An answer, depending on the circumstance. Because what it is that they don't know. And they don't understand. Who yoyser chomer mizeh. Baharbi. Their ignorance is a lot worse than the fact that they're insulting me. Their amaratsis is far more devastating than all of the narishkaiten that they're barraging me with. So it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm more concerned about their ignorance than I'm concerned about my indignity. It's not at all by my own honor. Because my self-honor and my nature Ledaiti in my assessment of myself, who lis ale min asichlim to not notice fools. Loy the natech is mamilim not to try to win them with words. Okay, v'hay tzorbe me rabbanu that is amu quotes like Gemara. I think a person who is a true chamut chacham kuchabriyichu yitba yikare the Eibushter will demand his honor. Don't we worry about me? Ramam says the Eibushter will look after me. Says, I can only speak about you and sort of speak, forgive you for your reaction. I am like your father. And am I am like your teacher. And as a result, you couldn't control yourself. You couldn't contain yourself and you reacted. You caused me great pain. Your frustration and your upsetness and your reaction. That you are all caught up in this narishkeit. Va'ato says Rambam, and you, kasher tilma be'ezas Hashem, when you learn with the Eibush to help, v'techonech, and you're going to become educated. V'tovin, you'll understand lemisha meivin to people who truly understand. Utefarse ma'aloisov.
and you will disseminate his strengths, his attributes. V'toyel ibn Adam boy, and it will benefit people through it. Yiyazeh chavav alai, Allah chavav alai. It'll be more meaningful to you and to me than to argue with these two people. Instead of focusing on this condemnation, tell people about my Sfarim. If people will benefit from my Sfarim, that's far more useful and far more rewarding than winning this argument with these two individuals. Yeah, I think I think we my life of his Sefer, yes. But talk loud. So the Rambam is not objecting to his objection. <laughs> He's objecting to his emotions. You have, to con you have to react. But you have to react unemotionally because it's a waste. It's pushed a waste. Jealousy is an ugly midah. It's a terribly ugly midah. And the best people get caught up in it. And when a good person gets caught up in jealousy, that good person becomes so ugly, it's disgusting. You can't imagine. A person who in other arenas is a giant is, is less than a child. The Ramam is saying, what are you getting cooked up about? Laws, leave it. And he's right. The Ramam is 100% right. And also it shows us, huh? us to be at the eagle and not the dog. That's right. Well, that's the bottom line. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but kinat sofrim tarbe chachma lo tipshut. When when they when rabbis are jealous, more teira comes into the world. But if the reaction of the jealousy is not even to read the writings of your counterpart to know what he's saying, that's not kinat sofrim tarbe chachma. That's not shkay. And that's what he's talking about. They don't even want to read my svar, and they're afraid they may learn something they don't know. God forbid. And now that Abba continues, Avuzeh Mars Chai is the only name that Abba mentions. This is an individual whose name is Chariya, who is pessimistic. He's a push, a foolish man. Ukvar Kara Leyatzma. He studied Mikra Tanach on his own. The Yoga Ba Eisei Hamasa Va Amaten Va Pirushim, and he's toiled. He struggled in the give and take of the Shas and the Mefashim on the Shas. And I suppose it also means in the philosophies. Umedama, and he's convinced himself that he's the greatest scholar in the world. And he ain't. <laughs> he's not that bright. You don't know it. The problem with being a fool is that you don't know you're foolish, right? The Reb Marash used to say, Anar meint is Anar de Welt. Nar in Nar te mer nisht vizich alei. Nu is den ha kunst, Nar in Anar. You have to learn Yiddish for this. He says, a fool thinks he's fooling the whole world. He's only fooling himself. Nu, is it a trick to fool a fool? So he says, He's reached a higher level of intellectual wholeness. And you, my son, God is my witness. You know full well that I'm not an arrogant man. You know full well that I'm very careful with my pen and with my tongue. I don't march around condemning people. I honor people. Whether they deserve the honor, they don't deserve the honor. I honor Chachmi Yisro. The Rambam knew. The Rambam knew that he had no equal in his generation. But the Rambam knew also that he has to honor people. And the Rambam honored people for whatever they were. He honored people. Yedeya kama mekvar, you know the extent to which I need to give the Chachmei Yisrael, I honor Chedel Yisrael. Kash ani yedeya erech ma'alos and metech devreim, based on how I recognize their worth from their writings, from their Torah. Koshkein, certainly. Shekvar omru, now you turn over page five now, column five. That the Gemara says, Dover kot navayis abaya barova. That the teachings of Abaya and Rava are considered small. The imze etli dover katan. And if the writings of the Shas are, relatively speaking, insignificant compared to the deeper secrets of the Teda, heich asim leiv. Why would I get upset? Lezakein miskin biemis. 
to an old man who is in fact miskin. He's just not that bright. Sikiel b'chol dover, he's foolish in every area. I view him as a child that's one day old. And therefore, be kind to him. He's not a bright man. And the problem with not being bright is <laughs> that sometimes you don't know it. So I forgive him. You should forgive him also. He was condemning the Ramam for different things that he wrote. He objected to the Ramam's commentary on Mishnah. It's because I made certain corrections in a variety of places that needed to be made. And the Abishter who created everything knows, Kirubam, most of them. Hit Anibahem, Shenim Shachti Achra Geinim Zal. That most of them are based on what I followed from the Goinim. Like the Ran in Megillah Storim. Thank you very much. And others. It's hard for me to remember all of their names. In other words, I may have made certain mistakes, but the mistakes that I didn't make were not my own. They were mistakes that I made because I trusted those who came before me. And even if in fact the mistakes are my own, any toyin, I don't claim, says Rambam, that every person has reached his final shleimus from the outset. The Pidush Mishnah Rambam wrote as a young man in his 20s. Maybe there's mistakes, maybe. First of all, a lot of my mistakes was because I trusted the Goyin who came before me. And even if the mistakes are my own, I don't claim to be perfect. But there's no reason to focus on my few mistakes and on this basis to condemn the whole work. It's childish. I don't say I didn't make any mistakes. Whenever somebody came along and picked on a specific example, as opposed to saying, burn the book. <laughs> burn, you burn books, what do you have? Nothing happens. You point out a specific mistake. They always recapitulate. I, I, I took back my mistake. Anything which may have been wrong in my writings or in my personality that's been pointed out to me, I correct it. And the Ramam said, I'm sorry? I don't know. I don't know. But he, he said that the whole Yad, it says in footnote 50 that the first transcript of Peter Shamishnayas was full of errors. It was such a written mistakes that he was objecting to. And the Ramam corrected them. And the Ramam is saying, even if the mistakes are mistakes, first of all, many of them are based because I trusted the Savim that I had from the Goin. And even if the mistakes are my own, I'm prepared to correct them. But you can't burn my book, condemn everything because of the mistakes that were found there, either my own or somebody else's. And now that I'm, I'm, I don't have enough time to read this all, but this is so interesting. He says, I got the letter from this Rab Zechariah. Yeah? Ba'anova Yesero Bitznatsos. And he writes to me with such piety. Isaiah Halig. <laughs> Ramam was no fool. He understood the, the, the false sincerity. I know that all he wants is that I should answer him. What's going to happen when I answer him? He'll show people that I wrote him a letter. And he'll boast. Ah, you see, me and the Rambam, <laughs> we correspond. He's not going to tell people what he wrote to me. And I'll tell you, what did he write to me? Gedulas Rasha Yeshiva, the greatness of the Rasha Yeshiva. Veshu Yochad Adelis, he's the greatest man of all generations. Veshu, huh? no, about the Rasha Yeshiva, about him, about himself also. Veshu Atzmei Choshvei BeBagdad LeMenesi, it was his decision to make him the Rasha Yeshiva. When he heard his words and he saw him, he can't oppose what the Rosh Hashiva says. He writes at length. That the great men of the West don't stop to praise the Yeshiva. He wants me to support him. Again, the technical, the politics was that they appointed a different candidate to be the head of the Kehillah. And the Ramam didn't know this. The Ramam writes later, if I knew that they appointed a different candidate, I would never appoint my own. But the Ramam appointed a different candidate. And this became 
a whole stink, it became a whole deal. So this person is Abdelkhai says, you know who you're disagreeing with, the Reisha Yeshiva. Now, here's the other side of the coin. But God, I got the same letter from the Rosh Yeshiva. They're exchanged, each one is writing the praises of the next, you understand? Vishavanosayatsumadisabzahari is a brilliant man. Vaarbe Sidi Tamad Ruchana Piv, he knows four stutterm of Shas by heart. Vehera Gambi Inyan Zeh, he too writes at length. Vinasu Gamun Zazeh, it's very clear to me that these two people wrote these letters together. And each one is praising the next. So I should back off. I'm not that stupid. Vani Yedeya, Tachos Kalam is Kenim Alolu. I know the point. And what they want is that I should answer them and they'll be able to show people that I wrote them a letter without showing people what I wrote them in the letter. And then they're going to exploit my signature. That's what he writes. And I'm skipping a little bit. The last line of that paragraph says, I have so far not responded. Because I don't want him to exploit my signature and to use me against myself as it were. There's so much more here, but we're going to stop right now. I encourage you to read this. If you know any Hebrew, you'll mamish enjoy it. Igis Rambam from Rabbi Yisaf Kapach, his translation.